Hey there, Mike Giannotti here, and for quite a while I have been considering doing a podcast of some kind. I've had stops and starts, etc., and uh, finally I had the suggestion that I actually capture some of, you know, my growing up and stuff for my kids, just put this out there, you know, things that I went through and, and all that kind of stuff, and so what I thought I'd do is actually start off with this before I get to me. This was written by my father for uh, my sisters and myself. It's called Garibaldi Park, the corner and growing up Italian. And uh, once in a while, what I'll do is, you know, just read excerpts from it. Um, I'll start at the beginning. And uh, the thing I love about it, and my dad wrote this, and he wrote a letter, you know, with it. He said, you know, I'll just read it, this, his acknowledgments. Uh, he said, my thanks to Dominic... S. Piacenza for his history of Garibaldi Square, the Garibaldi Square Foundation and dedication included in this introduction. It is with fond memories that I dedicate this stroll down memory lane to the families, friends, and neighbors that made it possible. The untold numbers of immigrants that settled into this little corner of the United States. The untold number of immigrants that's, oh, that settled into this little corner of the United States that promised them a chance to succeed. The love, discipline, and hard work proved this to be true and left a legacy for future generations. God bless those pioneers for providing that opportunity. I'll never forget the corner where Garibaldi Park that provided so many experiences and living with the strength of friendship that could never be broken. It was truly my extended family. To my son Michael, my daughters Mary and Laura, I hope the following explains some of my unusual mannerisms you may observe while growing into adulthood. Pasquale Patsy Gennati. And he says, note, the names of these characters, except for my family, have been changed to protect their anonymity. So he's got a lot of crazy stories about growing up as an immigrant son. Um, he's got a little history, Gary Baldy Square. I'm not going to read all that. I'll just kind of surmise it to say that uh, my father grew up in New London, Connecticut. Um, he was born to, you know, my grandpa and my grandma. Uh, his mother, my grandma, died when he was very young after uh, his youngest brother, uh, Jerry, was born. And so I never got to know her, but I grew up uh, with my grandpa who... Um, Loved dearly. Uh, we had spaghetti day every Sunday at his house. And I'll talk more about all that kind of stuff when I get to my childhood. Uh, but Garibaldi Square in New London. New London had uh, this area that was kind of like a little Italy for uh, a lot of the immigrants growing up. And it was very much divided amongst the different New London with the different immigrant groups uh, that had come over. You know, you had the Italian, the Irish, and others. And... Uh, my father grew up in a little Italy uh, section, and at the, coming down into that area um, where he lived on Shaw Street, uh, there was a small park called Garibaldi Park, and it was kind of like a nexus between a number of the major roads running into downtown New London, and in that park, people would gather, talk, and do things, you know, as he was growing up, and he grew up in the Depression. Uh, so, you know, he just missed World War II. He was in the Korean War. Um, but this is all about, like, his childhood growing up. Uh, I've got other uh, stuff that he wrote from post that. Uh, but uh, we'll start off. And I'm just going to start off, like I said, reading. Um, thank you for tuning in. And I hope that you find this fun, educational. And if you have questions, you know, pop them my way. I'd love to hear them. So... Let's go ahead. I'm going to put on some reading glasses. Should have had those on the last time. And we will start with the park in the corner. It says Garibaldi Park was a triangular wedge of land bounded by three streets. To the west, a brook, Truman, ran underground to Shaw's Cove. It surfaced east of Woodbridge Street along the then city dump into Shaw's Cove. Italian immigrants had moved into this area during the latter part of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th prior to World War I. They left the poverty of their native country for a promising life in the New World. 
Many of these hardworking Italians had acquired property and built homes and several substantial brick apartment buildings on these streets. Each evening, groups of people would gather at Garibaldi Park to visit and speak in their native language. Different regions in Italy and Sicily were, re were remote and dialects in Italian from those regions predominated. Future immigrants from Italy and Sicily continued to settle in this area and the corner began to grow and prosper. More stores were needed to cater to the Italian culture. As the city grew, craftsmen and artisans were needed. As the community expanded, the significance of Italian culture was celebrated citywide. Shaw Street extended from Garibaldi Park up Shaw Street to the Pequot Avenue Rotary. Along the railroad underpass was the Fort Trumbull area, bounded by the Thames River, Howard Street, and Pequot Avenue. Garibaldi Park and Fort Trumbull areas became the focus of the Italian community. A distinct and separate Italian community settled in the Fort Trumbull area, as opposed to Shaw Street. Italian immigrants tended to settle in the United States in neighborhoods containing people who were also from their particular region in Italy. Throughout the years, there was a good-natured rivalry between the young groups living in the Fort Trumbull and the Shaw Street area. So that's kind of like his prelogue into this. Um, and I'm going to stop right there. We'll continue in the next video reading chapter one. He did write chapters. Uh, but uh, you can just a couple of, you know, a couple of quick things on this. When he's talking about the various groups, you have to remember that the Italian they spoke was not Italian as we think of it today, which is Romanized from the Roman. Uh, you know, it's kind of been standardized over the years. They spoke dialect, and often those dialects could be, you know, there's a lot of commonality, but differences. Similar to what we see with uh, Spanish, if you go to Mexico or to Colombia or to Spain, there are many things. I remember, uh, just a quick side story, I was the best man at uh, a friend of mine in the army, uh, Ramon Ramos, and his wife, um, their wedding. And he was uh, Puerto Rican, but grew up in the Philadelphia area, and she spoke Spanish, and she was from Mexico, from Juarez, Mexico. And oftentimes we, we'd be having dinner, the three of us, so I was the third wheel that tagged along, and uh, we'd be having dinner, and he would say something, and she would look at him, or she'd say something, he'd look at her, and the, the, because they had different dialects, right? Different, and so the same thing with the Italians from the different areas of Italy. They had various dialects, uh, and I have a story about that with my dad when he was grown and went to Italy for the first time at a future point. But having said that, they had these different groups, and they had two distinct groups, one in the Shaw Street area of New London and the other in the Fort Trumbull area. And uh, that'll come out in some of the stories that he talks about. But look forward to reading from my father's once we get through my dad's. And I'll start on my own childhood growing up as an immigrant's immigrant son. Um, who The only Italian I ever learned was from my cousin Michael, who used to tell me bad, <laughs> bad words to say. And uh, yeah, we'll get to all that. But... Have a great day. Take care and as always, ciao.